Hi girls, how are you? I'm Alex Hightiertz. Okay, we're going to continue reading with Helen Tevitz. Okay. Remember they were going to stop by the road for the horses. Okay, here we go. Mr. Allen drew over to the side of the road near some horses in a makeshift corral. Austin scrambled out of the car and ran to the horses, while others followed. Daddy, please let us go horseback riding. All my life I've wanted to ride a horse. Please, Daddy. You and Mother could go on and look at the, at the flowers and come back for us. Would it be safe for the girls to ride alone, Mr. Allen? Asked the man with the horses. Please, Mother, begged Austin. Make my wish come true. Sure, kids do it all the time, answered the man. They ride up that dirt road as far as the old sawmill and turn around and come back. We all know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> the horses know the way. It takes about a half hour. Road runs right along the highway. They won't be thrown from the horses, asked Mrs. Allen. From these horses, asked the man. Nah, lady, these horses worked at a riding academy for years. You're sure that they're gentle? Yes, ma'am, gentle as kittens. The girls could hang on to the saddle horn, suggested Mr. Allen. Oh, Daddy, you're not supposed to hang on to the saddle horn. Only tenderfoots, I mean tenderfeet do that. We'll be safe because Ellen has ridden a lot, and I know all about riding from books. Ellen wished Austin would keep still. She was not at all sure she wanted to ride, especially without a grown-up along. I, su I suppose it would be safe to let the girls walk for half an hour, said Mr. Ellen. We could walk along the dirt road and look at the flowers while they rode. That would be within shouting distance. All right, girls, which horses do you want to ride, asked Mr. Allen, taking a handful of change out of his pocket. Ellen thought she had better act brave, even if she didn't feel that way. Even if she didn't feel, even if she didn't feel that way. <laughs> I'd rather have the brown one. Oh, the spotted horse is nice. The spotted horse is nice, but uh, I think I'd rather have the brown one over in the corner. Move over a little bit. I think. Here we go. In the corner of the pen. She thought the brown horse looked gentle. This picture. I'll take the pinto on this side of the corral, said Austin, gla glancing at Ellen. Oh dear, thought Ellen, I've said the wrong thing. I wish I'd read some horse books. Austin watched eagerly, and Ellen watched uneasily while the man saddled and bridled the two horses. Okay, kids, he said. Ellen walked over to the brown horse and patted him very softly. He seemed awfully big when she stood beside him. But he looked down at her with large, gentle eyes, and Ellen felt braver. The man held out his hand, palm up. Oh, I wonder if he wants me to give him some money, thought Ellen. It must be that, but I'm sure Austin's father paid him. Or maybe he wants to shake hands, a sort of farewell. Come on, girlie, step up, said the man. Don't be scared. Brownie isn't going to hurt you. My goodness, thought Ellen. I, I guess he expects me to step in his hand. I suppose it's all right. His hand is dirty anyway. She put her foot in his hand, and he boosted her onto the horse. The ground seemed a long way below her, and Ellen had forgotten... Uh, how wide a horse was. The man shortened her stirrups and then helped Austin onto the pinto. Ellen patted Brownie on the neck. She was anxious to have him like her. If only she had a lump of sugar in her pocket. Look, cried Austin, I'm really on a horse. Ellen knew she was expected to take the lead. Giddy up, she said uncertainly. Brownie did not move. The man gave each horse a slight slap on the rump. They walked out of the corral and ambled down the dirt road as if they were used to going that way. Austin's mother and father followed on foot. Ellen carefully held one rein in each hand. As she looked at the ground below, she hoped Brownie wouldn't decide to run. I'm going to call my horse Old Paint, like in that song, said Austin, who never missed the Montana Wranglers on the radio and knew all about cowboy songs. I wish I'd worn my, my cowboy neckerchief. Yes, said Ellen briefly. She didn't feel like making conversation. When Alstine's house moved in front, Ellen took hold of the saddle horn. It wasn't so much she was scared, she just didn't want to take any chances. I wish we'd worn our pedal pushers, said Alstine. It's sort of hard to feel like a cowgirl in a dress. I wish we had too. Maybe this wasn't going to be so bad after all. The horses seemed to know the way, and Ellen found the rocking motion uh, and the squeak of the saddle rather pleasant. She was even able to look around at the trees and enjoy the smell. Then... Uh, when they had gone around a bend in the road, Brownie decided it was time to go back to the corral. 
He turned around and started walking in the, in the direction from which they had come. Hey, said Ellen anxiously. She pulled on the right rein. Brownie kept going. Stop, she ordered more loudly this time. Why? What are you going that way for, asked, asked Austin, turning in the saddle. Because the horse wants to, said Ellen. Well, turn him around. I, I can't, said Ellen. He won't steer. Austin turned old paint and drew up beside Ellen. Don't you know you're supposed to hold both of the reins in one hand? Ellen didn't know. I just held them this way to try to turn them, she said. She looked. She took them in her left hand. She was. They were so long, she wound them around her hand. Austin leaned over and took hold of Brownie's bridle in, with one hand. Come on, old paint, she said, and turned her horse forward again. Brownie followed. Thanks, said Ellen. My, you're brave. Oh, that's nothing, said Austin. You don't steer a horse, she said. You guide him. Oh, I forgot. Ellen wondered how she would ever explain her ignorance to Austin. What would her best friend think when she found out that Ellen had misled her? The horses plodded on down the road. Through the trees, the girl could see the highway and hear cars passing. Austin's mother and father appeared around the bend, and Ellen began to feel brave again. Let's gallop, said Austin. Ellen's legs were beginning to ache. How do you make them gallop? Dig your heels in, said Austin. Oh, I wouldn't want to hurt the horse, said Ellen. Ah, you won't hurt him, silly. Cowboys wore spurs, don't they? Ellen timidly prodded Brownie with her heels. Brownie ambled on. Austin dug in her heels. Old paint began to trot. At first, Austin bounced, but soon she rode smoothly, and then her horse began to gallop. When old paint galloped, Brownie began to trot. Ellen began to bounce. She hung on to the saddle horn as hard as she could. Still, she bounced. Slap, slap, slap. Her bare legs began to hurt from rubbing against the leather of the saddle flap. Slap, slap, slap. Goodness, I sound awful, she thought. I hope Austin doesn't hear me slapping this way. I don't know if you ever guys ever rode a horse, but when a horse trots, you just bounce up and down. And then when they start galloping, it's a little smoother. Austin's horse, after galloping a few yards, slowed down to a walk. Whoa, old paint, cried Austin and pulled on the reins. Old paint stopped and... Austin panted a minute. I did it, Ellen, she called. It was just a few steps, but I really, truly galloped. I hung on with my knees and galloped, just like in, 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 the, in the movies. Whoa, Ellen's voice was jarred out between bounces. Brownie trotted on. Slap, slap. Ellen beca Austin began to laugh. I can see trees between you and the saddle every time you go up. Oh, Ellen, you look so funny. Slap, slap. Ellen didn't think she could stand much more bouncing. It was worse than being spanked. Ellen Tebbets, I don't think you know a thing about horseback riding. Whoa! When Brownie reached old paint, he stopped. After Ellen got her breath, she said, I do, it's just that the other roses I, ro horses I rode were tamer. The horses walked on until the road curved down to the edge of a stream. Oh, look, there's the bridge. There's a bridge, exclaimed Ellen, looking up. I guess the highway crosses uh, to the other side. I wonder if the poor horses are thirsty. There was no doubt about Brownie's wanting a drink. He left the road and picked his way down to the rocky bank of the water. Poor horsey, you were thirsty, said Ellen, putting his, patting his neck. But Brownie did not stop at the edge of the stream. He waded out into it. There's Brownie and there's Ellen Tebbets. Whoa, yelled Ellen. Austin, help. Brownie kept going. Austin, what do I do? He's going swimming. Here, Brownie, here, Brownie, called Austin. Her voice sounded faint across the surging water. When Brownie had picked his way uh, around the boulders to the middle of the stream, he stopped and looked around. Look, he's in over his knees, Ellen looked. Giddy up, Brownie, giddy up. Kick him in the ribs, yelled Austin from across the stream. I don't want to hurt him, cried Ellen, but she did kick him gently. Brownie did not appear to notice. Slap him on the behind with the ends of the reins, directed Austin. Ellen slapped. Brownie turned his head and looked at her reproachfully. Okay, we'll stop. I've got to make a new one because it's almost 10 minutes. Come on.